Hallo zusammen, I'm your vlog Dave and the Rammstein track I want to talk about today could be summarized under one single term, which would be Widerspruch. But why is that? So we have finally reached the seventh track on the seventh studio album by the band, by the six guys from Berlin. And what can I say about this one? Well, immediately it wasn't one that stood out to me, to be honest, but it really grew on me as a pretty, pretty cool, pretty solid song. And in fact, I'd say it's quite mathematical in a way, which is pretty cool. There is a, well, a structure that everyone knows, like verse, chorus, verse to it, but there are some additional figures, so to speak, additional elements in between, and I'm gonna talk about those in a second as well. But first, let's start with the very first thing that really pops out, that really sticks out, because it's the first thing that we can hear lyrically, the first verse. Ich kann auf Glück verzichten. Weil es Unglück in sich trägt, muss ich es vernichten. Was ich liebe, will ich richten. I can abstain from luck. Because it contains bad luck, I need to destroy it. What I love, I want to judge or regulate or execute. You might have recognized two very similar words in these first lines. The first one is das Glück, the luck. The second term is quite the opposite of Glück, das Unglück, the unluck, translated literally, so to speak. So I guess you could argue that this is the first example of the so-called Widerspruch that I've mentioned before. It's der Widerspruch, singular, die Widersprüche, plural, the contradiction. Or maybe you could also call it das Paradoxon, the paradox. Because how can feeling lucky mean bad luck? And how can luck actually contain bad luck? Like. Maybe if you're a lucky person, or if you're a really, really lucky person for that matter, which is, of course, cool and good by the way, I'd say, maybe, you know? If you're that, you might be a bit, well, naive when it comes to obstacles in your way, or something that might cause that luck to end, right? So, you might see only the good things and you might not reflect on things as much now because you're lucky, you don't have a reason to do that. But that's just my assumption, maybe you have a different assumption? Or maybe you agree with that? Tell me in the comments, because I'd really like to know. What I really like is how subtle yet direct the second and third lines are connected. You might not recognize it at first, also because of the very short breathing break in between, but semantically they are linked. Weil es Unglück in sich trägt, muss ich es vernichten. So the lyrical eye actually gives us a reason and what will result out of this opinion. They are ready and willing to act in a self-destructing manner, so to speak. Might turn out not so healthy in the end, but I guess they know best what they need to do. Then one of my so-called insertions follows, pretty much as a missing link between verses 1 and 2. Dass ich froh bin, darf nicht sein. Nein. Nein, nein. That I'm happy mustn't be. No, no, no. Pretty much as an act of mental or cognitive Selbstgeißelung, self-flagellation or self-punishment, they don't even allow themselves to experience happiness. They need, they want to feel bad in order to get an effect out of that. Linguistically, these two lines make for a pretty interesting structure that sort of deviates from the typical German sentence structure. The first line begins with the conjunction DAS with double S, which usually introduces an object clause after a usual ordinate clause has been expressed. But here, the statement starts with the object clause. If you'd swap both parts, this becomes a bit more apparent. Es darf nicht sein, dass ich froh bin. It mustn't be that I'm happy. And if you, yes, I want you, if you want to learn more about the difference between does with one S and does with two S or double S, feel free to watch my German lesson on that at the end of this video, because you can find a link to that one in the end card. Nein, the German equivalent for the interjection no in English can be heard in quite a few other Rammstein tracks too. If you ask me as a native German, I simply like the sound of it, especially when it's used without accompanying terms just on its own. Nein. I guess you could argue that the next part still belongs to the first verse. 
However, because of the increasing instrumental section in the background with some little cool details in the percussion, I'd call this verse 2. Ich liebe nicht, dass ich was liebe. Ich mag es nicht, wenn ich was mag. Ich freue mich nicht, wenn ich mich freue. Weiß ich doch, ich werde es bereuen. I don't love that I love something. I don't like it when I like something. I'm not happy when I'm happy. Since I know I will regret it. To me, this feels like the lyrical eye is sort of torn between wanting to be like this on the one hand and feeling forced to behave this way on the other hand, almost like a Zwang, der Zwang, the compulsion. That is because the verb etwas bereuen, to regret something, has a really negative connotation to it. You do something you actually like or would like to do, well in this case feeling happy, but you don't dare to because otherwise you'd need to punish yourself or get punished by your conscience pretty much based on your own morals and rules you've set up for yourself or, which might also be true, we don't really know for sure the morals and rules someone else has forced upon you. That might also be the case. Structure-wise, these lines are more good examples for the term I've mentioned at the very beginning, der Widerspruch. In fact, they even are a sort of emotional and cognitive paradoxon, a paradox. How can you dislike liking something? And how would you even allow yourself to feel this way? And why? Following after these even more mysterious lines, there's another insertion, which in this case also functions as a direct lead into the chorus. Dass ich froh bin, darf nicht sein. Wer mich liebt, geht dabei ein. That I'm happy mustn't be. Who or whoever loves me will blossom, degenerate or die doing so. To me, and I guess to most Germans, the expression eingehen evokes associations of flowers and blossoms that verwelken that wither or shrivel, simply because the end has come, or someone didn't care enough for them, which metaphorically might very well apply to the situation here too. The lyrical eye has been harmed and disappointed emotionally and mentally up to the point they would do the same to a potential lover later on. In that sense, this pretty much works as an indirect warning. Whoever wants to love me is risking deteriorating and exhausting themselves emotionally or mentally. Hmm. On a side note, talking about flowers and warning someone. Funny enough, in German we have a saying that goes jemandem etwas durch die Blume sagen, which basically translates to something like to tell someone something through the flower. Because flowers are beautiful, and even if it's something bad or negative or even criticism you have to tell someone or you want to tell someone and you don't want to do that directly, you want to do that in a bit more subtle way, so to speak, you do it through the flower. Jemanden durch die Blume kritisieren, for instance. To criticize someone through the flower, meaning in a very subtle, not so direct, not so aggressive way even. That's what this means and that could potentially fit the context of the song or, well, at least this part of the lyrics, I'd say, which is pretty interesting when you think about it. Now the chorus enters the pretty happy and delightful scenery, uh, which no, uh, and it expresses a more confident opinion, but not in a good way. Was ich liebe, das wird verderben. Was ich liebe, das muss auch sterben. Muss sterben. What I love, that will decay. What I love, that also needs to die. Needs to die. By the way, here I put an emphasis on it's me loving, was ich liebe. But you could also very well intonate it like this, was ich liebe, what I love. So it's not so much about can or could, it's definite. Love me and you will lose your life doing so. I promise. No, not me, but the lyrical I does, you know. The constant balancing between the two terms was, what and does, that is subtle as these are only a small part of each line, but they work really well for the overall feel of the chorus. If you'd express these things in a normal German way, you'd drop the das. Was ich liebe wird verderben. Since this wouldn't fit the meter of these lines in combination, Till chose to add das. Well, at least, I'm pretty sure that's one reason why he did that. 
I really like the prolonged last line which serves as a little climax in addition to this being the chorus in the first place. Also the heavy riff section coming after the chorus sounds even stronger because of this, I think. The tune continues with the third verse. So halte ich mich schadlos. Lieben darf ich nicht. Dann brauche ich nicht zu leiden. Nein. Und kein Herz zerbricht. So I keep myself harmless or from causing harm. I'm not allowed to love, because then I won't have to suffer. No, and no heart will break. This is basically an additional explanation to the lyrical eye's behavior. You might also recognize the German noun das Herz, singular, die Herzen, plural, which is one of a couple of German terms Till Linnemann likes to use a whole lot. I've tackled examples for this and more in another video by the way, so if you want to learn more about them, check them out at the end of this one. And talking about the end, it's near, in terms of this video as well, since most of the remaining parts of this song are a repetition of ones I've already mentioned. However, there's an additional post-chorus section after the second chorus, which now plays over the aforementioned heavy guitar section. Auf Glück und Freude folgen Qualen. Für alles Schöne muss man zahlen, ja. What follows after luck and happiness is much agony. For every beauty one has to pay, yes. As you can see here, the more or less direct English translation is a bit sloppy here again. Especially the first two connected lines were quite tricky for me to be honest. I tried to be as faithful to the original German terms, while keeping the basic structure and words but hey, all in all this was a sort of hidden gem for me at first listen. The song didn't really catch my attention at first, but now it's one of my favorite mid-tempo songs on the album. Another quite big reason actually for that is the cool sound design. I love the little percussive and electronic details in the background of this one. And last but not least, of course I want to know what do you think of this song, what do you make of it, especially the lyrics. Did you understand them? Did you actually catch up some words? that you have heard of before, but you didn't know the meaning, of course. Do they have a good sound, a good ring? Do certain terms or certain parts stand out more than others do? All those kinds of things, feel free to tell me in the comments. As always, you can find links to my social media pages for support and support options such as PayPal or Patreon in the video description down below. If you want to say thanks Dave, thanks for the videos and I want to support you, I would like to do that. Of course, feel free to do so, it's all voluntarily though, so don't feel obliged or forced to do something. Just wanted to put this out there. And of course, what I also want to put out there is, well, Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, let me know by leaving a like and all the other things that you have heard of multiple times by now, sharing my videos with others. That would be greatly appreciated as well since it helps a rather little channel like mine a whole lot. Thanks for watching everyone, I'm your vlog Dave, tschüss und bis zum nächsten Mal.